Oh, Byron, by the way, we had a really great day yesterday. Am I, am I right? Absolutely. Uh, 18 trades uh, yesterday, uh, total uh, 15 trades, either hit, take profit, or we either close out the trades in profit, uh, one trade hit stop loss. Um, and we continue that momentum today. Uh, another 12 trades, no stop losses hit yet. Uh, mostly take profits and uh, uh, close out the profits on all the trades today. And can you give just a quick advice on people who have micro accounts? They have smaller accounts. Because, um, you know, you and I, and thank you, Byron, you did so well getting on the line with one of our partners who I think she's learned her lesson because she wasn't going to class. She was trading a standard on four different trades, which is a huge no-no. <laughs> uh, but you did a phenomenal job because, you know, sometimes I need reinforcement. I need calm voices. And you calmed her down a little bit. I'm like, what? You ain't going to class. <laughs> I'm like, hold on. Let me call Byron. I don't want to push her over the edge. Um, so, Byron, what would you say to someone who has a micro account? If if, if you're trading with a micro account, uh, anything, I would say under 500 bucks, really, you should be trading at a 0 0.01. Um, and, you know, unless you, you know, you're really comfortable with, with trading indices, I would really stay away from indices unless you have at least a thousand dollars equity in your account, because, you know, it, it moves so fast. Uh, the market moves so fast with indices. Sometimes, you know, you might lose two, three hundred dollars um, in a matter of minutes. Uh, I've, I've seen it done. It's happened to me before. Uh, so you have to be very, very careful. If you, if you don't have that, if you don't have a thousand dollars equity in your account, just stay away from indices. Absolutely. So it's really about getting into class and asking a lot of questions. Um, ladies and gentlemen, don't be in a hurry, right? We treat this like a school of money but you're learning it and you're not in a hurry our um subscription is not expensive right no matter where you are in this country i don't care a hundred dollars is not a lot of money and if it is something's wrong with your consistency i we talked about it yesterday i said you don't have a money problem you have a consistency problem and even if you're in another country and the average wage or whatever you know you got to figure it out. You, you have to. You have to figure out how to hustle and grind. Our, our young people do it. And I know some of you may take offense to this, but I, I love to work with ex-offenders, right? You know why? Because they dream big. They hustle really hard. Just at some point, they had the wrong product. But there's something to say about somebody who is willing to risk their life and freedom to get it out the mud. Uh, I wrote an article about it. I'm all about controversy, right? <laughs> but I meant it. And I wrote this article years ago and I said, you know, while everybody's trying to throw away our young people who get involved in crime, I go and scoop them up and, and give them redirection. And what I love about working with ex-offenders or drug dealers is because guess what? They already get my industry. They do the same thing that I do. I was talking to a drug dealer, no kidding, reformed now <laughs> in this program i was talking to a drug dealer and um i said listen i do the same thing that and some people love my transparency some people are like oh, what's she gonna say next but i'm a realist right you don't go to a drug dealer and throw a book at them and tell them go to college and wait four years and then maybe you'll get a job and maybe they'll respect you and maybe you'll be able to retire comfortably what they are not listening to you right you got to talk to to these people to those types of individuals you got to speak to their shark and they're very very intelligent so they're going to sniff out the bs pretty quickly if you try to give it to them so i went and i told this drug dealer young kid right he's in he's getting getting ready to get out of jail he used to be my student and he hit me up and he said i saw you on facebook <laughs> i'm like you're in jail how are you seeing me on Facebook? But anyway, that's another conversation. Um, and I sent him over a whole bunch of videos and he's getting ready to get out of jail. So he hit me up and he's like, listen, I don't want to go back to the streets. I want to do what you do. I said, well, listen, you're already, you already did what I did, right? You went into people's towns and cities 
as a distributor, that's what I do. <laughs> I'm a distributor. You went into people's towns and cities and you looked for two things. You looked for customers who wanted to buy your product and use your product. And you looked for distributors who want to help you distribute. You look for leaders in that city so you don't have to get on the highway and risk your freedom. You went into their cities and you look for distros. Where are my power people, right? You look for distros, distributors who would distribute the product and you looked for customers and you went from city to city. You did home parties sometimes because you ran up into their homes. <laughs> you you uh, did whatever it takes. They You went out and got a, a different cell phone so you can run your business from your separate cell phone. I do that too. I, my product just gives life. Your product doesn't. <laughs> your product is the death of our communities. And, and I told them just like that. I said, but listen, you got the right idea. You just have the right, wrong product. So do you want me to help you? Don't change anything about yourself though. Don't change yourself. I want you to be a grinder, a hustler. I want you to, you know, be willing to talk to anybody, right? You ever see a drug dealer for real? They will talk to anybody, anyone. Hey, listen, you're looking for some work? <laughs> Heck yeah. They're going to find their people and they're going to run the numbers. And eventually they're going to take over cities. And I want you to understand this. If they can do it, what's wrong with you? Don't be knocking them because they got bigger dreams and a harder hustle. Don't be knocking the drug dealer, right? Because they are 100% all in. <laughs> now ask yourself this question. You, how, how in are you? You hear no, boo, and you'll be running to the hills. This doesn't work. I can't make any money. And all you got to do is spend $124 to get into this opportunity and we ain't gonna lock you up. It's 100% legal. The return on your investment is ridiculous and you can help a lot of people. So guess what? I'm going to get the drug dealers. I, I'm, not, I'm not messing with those folks who always complain. They don't wanna spend any money. I'm not gonna keep going, but you know, like a drug dealer will put up the money, lots of it. They will put up the money and then they will make their money and then they will re-up and put the money back into their business. I've been hanging around way too many young drug dealers that are now reformed and I'm excited about that. So we're gonna just move on. We dream big, we hustle harder. I'm going to find the people who don't make excuses and just look for results, <laughs> okay? So listen, um, here are the four founders. Adrian Dynamite Sloan is our CFO. Reagan Lynch is our chief uh, finance. She's our everything, really. I don't even, she's our everything. Uh, Megan Lynch, the legend maker. I'm going to get in the streets and we got to go get them, right? I, I read this scripture from my brother, sent this scripture to me when I was really in a bad place. I just lost another student. And I was going to be going to the funeral and my brother, I called my brother kind of heartbroken. And he said, listen, let me read you this scripture. Rico, you can probably find it. But it said that mothers and fathers will be wailing and crying over their dead babies in the streets. So my brother said, you got to go get them. They're not going to come to you. You're going to have to get beat the streets and you're going to have to go get them. But I knew I had to get my money up. So I'm, I'm not even close to my my hopes and dreams, right? So when my brother told me that, and then I realized that if I wanted to save the sons and daughters, I had to go out in the streets and get them. Well, I, got, I had to get my own kid first because my own kid was like teeter-tottering, right? About to get just beat down by me, but he was teeter-tottering and flirting with, flirting with the, with the, with the, I don't even know how to say it, with the enemy, I guess. So I had to get my own son first. So I had to get my money up. So I'm in the midst of that right now. So now that my money is up, now all of a sudden people can hear me, right? So I'm just getting started, just so you guys know. The Jacob Mickle is our VP of Global Sales. Thank you, Rico. Jeremiah 3115, got it. Um, he is our chief, uh, he is our VP of Global Sales, does a phenomenal job of leading the troops. He's made over 10 million in the industry, so he knows exactly what he's doing. Make sure all of your people get into this training Monday through Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern. We are really gloves off on this call. It's not for everybody, 
right? This is a million dollar mastermind. If you don't want to make a million dollars um, a year or a million dollars a month, this is not a, the call for you. <laughs> but we do give updates to keep our field updated. Today is take a step back to take a step forward Tuesday. We'll talk about that. You have to take a step back for a second because when you're too close to something, it's distorted. You can't see what it is. Have you guys ever done that challenge where somebody shows you a picture and they say, guess what this picture is? But the lens, it's too zoomed in. It's way too close. So you can't really figure it out. Sometimes you got to zoom out. You got to take some steps backwards so you can see, oh man, that's a, that's a B. That's an, uh, <laughs> the eye of a B. I don't know. I watched a movie and that's what it was, but you got to take a step back to take a step forward. So we're going to talk about that today. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So what's good in the hood? Um, we are having a lot of meetings right now. Reagan is actually currently in a meeting right now with our uh, Visa card providers, uh, pay quicker. So we're excited about that. We're just kind of finalizing being able to have a Visa card that's going to allow people also potentially to be able to pay for their memberships with that Visa card. Also, you can hold up to a million dollars on the Visa card. Doesn't matter where you are on the planet, you can get your money quickly. So all of you international folks, you don't have to use, uh, you won't have to use Bitcoin anymore. You'll be able to just shift your money into your own currency. We are getting this thing done, ladies and gentlemen. We're only 79 days in. So realistic expectations, but we've done what most companies have not been able to do who have had this idea for years. You have to understand most of the network marketing companies, they were in the works for years. And then they took all their years of working and then they launched their company. We launched a company and paid out within 30 days. Crazy, right? Favor is not always fair, but that is what we're working on right now. We want to be able to get people into the company quickly. And right now you can get in so many different ways, Bitcoin, Ethereum, find somebody who has PayPal, Cash App, Skrill, um, whatever it is, right? As a leader right now, figure out how to get your people in. Zelle, if you're in the United States, bank to bank, it's simple. You can get your money out simply. Bitcoin, Ethereum, you can get a check. You can do ACH direct deposit. Make sure if you guys are going to do direct deposit today, do it before four o'clock so that it'll process on Friday and you get your money on Monday, okay? On Fridays, if you pull your money out by four on Friday, it processes on, I gotta look at that. Don't let me get to lying to you. Somebody will put it in there because you, you remember, okay? Um, but we're working on it, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna be running like a sewing machine. There's no reason why our numbers shouldn't blow through the roof. Once we get this credit card situation together because that's what's hurting our retention. people are not fully connected, so they don't remember to pay their bills, and it jacks up our rank sometimes. But we're working on that. Um, so right now, just do your due diligence and work with the people you've personally sponsored. Do you guys understand that if all of us worked with our people that we personally sponsored, it would make our lives so much easier? I wouldn't have to go to November's grandchildren and great-grandchildren, or my grandchildren and great-grandchildren because those are november's kids and november's taking care of her own kids and her kids are taking care of their own kids and so on and so forth don't forget that our 60-day challenge is rolling right now uh, please understand that brokers are going to be brokers they're going to do what they want that has nothing to do with extreme so for those people who are commenting in the telegram i don't know if they're in training or not but we can't control the brokers and sometimes they'll manipulate the market. So get multiple brokers. November, if you can throw that one broker in, um, November found a broker and I love the platform. I already uploaded funds to my account. Does that mean that you're not using pocket option or IQ option? No, it means that every real trader has multiple brokers. I don't think there's a real trader on this call trading Forex right now that has one broker. I have Hugo's Way, Trader's Way, LQDFX, FX Glory, um, all kind of stuff. <laughs> Why? Because brokers are gonna be brokers and you gotta be ready to use a different broker, okay? I think it's like Qtex or something like that, but I actually, um, 
I actually like it. Let me see if I can pull it up. Nope, that's a pocket option. Oh, here it is. So um, look at this broker. This is the, oh, let me log in. Hmm. Um, and it funded my, I funded my account really, really quickly. You see, I just put a hundred dollars in cause I wanted to see, but you know what I like about this broker? Let's take a look at it real quick. This broker, you see this time right here, purchase time, it actually counts down. So I would actually get into this trade at two seconds, not 32, 31. This one's on UTC four, which doesn't really mean anything to me. It just, it's the seconds. So when this gets to 58, see how this one's 22, 23, 24, but I would get into this trade, it's counting down. I'm not gonna get in at 32 because that's not right. At 11, if I wanna take a trade at 11.33, I need to push the button at two seconds on this timer. It'll be 58 seconds on this timer. It'll be two seconds on this one. Okay, oh, I was about to take a trade in my live account. No, I'm not. Cool. So anyway, you would push the button when it hit two seconds. So watch this. Five, four, three, two. It's about to be 1133. Boom, like clockwork. So get, a, get another broker just in case. All right. Yep, they have a demo as well. So um, don't be greedy, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and also I had a new person come in and they're like, oh, I lost those trades. I don't think she was doing it right. Because <laughs> I'm like, you don't even know the strategy. So you can't just be taking these trades if you don't know the strategy. So what you want to do is go into your back office. And in the back office, I posted the 18 minute video with the trades. Every time now there's the 18 minute video until we can get the HFX education, which will be roughly between a hundred and probably $130 um, one time. And then you can have HFX trading training two days a week with Mr. Wonderful. Okay. L Murphy, just throw it in the chat for me. If you have a question, don't forget, we have April 24th. We want to max this out with Les Brown, Eugene Mitchell and George Frazier with the real money coach. Don't forget that our schedule has changed. Monday through Saturday, 11 o'clock, and then opportunity calls Monday through Friday, um, two and nine, okay? And then on Saturdays, we're doing a two and nine now as well. Um, let me change this. Shiano, are you out there? Let me just change. I am, I am, I am. I have to just get out of that trade real quick. Oh, did we um, did we come to an agreement on you doing a nine on Saturday on on the? Yeah, yeah, I, I can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so <laughs> let me just get rid of this. So nothing's going to change on Monday through Saturday, but on Sunday, um, there are no calls on Sunday. So back to business, right? Monday through Saturday, eleven two and nine, and then. Um, I don't know which one this is. And then Sunday, you have that day to like get your week together, do your PS3s, all that good stuff, okay? I'm just gonna do it this way so that I can move into our, our new training. So remember yesterday, we talked about network marketing. You gotta put in the work. If you wanna make a lot of money in this industry, you have to understand consistency. You have to understand having thick skin. Stop caring what people think about you, right? If they're not paying your bills, if they're not, you know, you hear people say what, what you, uh, <laughs> I'm not even going to say it. Let me move on. Um, but you know, you can't care what people think you can't, right? You're never going to get to your hopes and dreams. If you are a, if you are a, a cotton ball, <laughs> if you are squishy, if you're soft network marketing, you can't be soft when you're doing network marketing, you got to have thick skin. You got to understand that Listen, I'm going to market a product and I'm going to get a return on it. I'm going to market to people and not everybody wants to drink the Kool-Aid that I'm offering. That's okay. Go talk to somebody else, <laughs> right? We got all these buzzwords of goals and dreams and positivity. And I said, goals and success, that's all about you. You need to start learning how to dream and being significant because significance is when you have greatness for others. I am very significant to my children. <laughs> very significant because I am 
what I am doing is positively impacting their life. You know, when you have your 19 year old come over and lay their head on your shoulder and say, mom, I really, really appreciate you. When at one point we, it was going down in this household uh, and it took a lot, you know, anybody who has teenage sons or daughters, it's a challenge. Anybody who has teenage sons or daughters without another parent, and sometimes you're just tired. You want to crawl under a rock or pick one up and throw it. <laughs> I'm just being very transparent. I'm sure I'm talking to somebody right now. It's not easy, right? Even when the money comes, guess what? It's not easy when the money comes, but it's a lot more, it's a lot easier. I will tell you that. Like I smile all the time because I'm not, I don't care about money and I don't worry about how to pay bills and I'm not overanalyzing and I don't go to the store yelling at my children and everything. Um, it's, it's, I'm going to tell you, it's, it's having money makes life better. I'm just going to tell you. Does it change everything? No, but I want to get you guys to this point, but you have to do the work because guess what? When I, I got to this level, I, I had to do the work. It did not come easy at all. You guys heard me tell a story. Byron was the only one that signed up in my business for like a month and a half. When I got back into network marketing, I took a break for like two years, a year and a half. I took a break from network marketing. So when I got back in, I didn't have the network. I had Byron Jennings, that's why I love him to this day, because he came into my last companies ago back in 2000 and I think 18, and ran really hard, gave me some strength and energy until I could start to have a voice. So I just presented to his people. I didn't have any people, I had Byron and Byron's team. So I just presented to his people and then people started to recognize that I was back and then um, 8,000 people came in. In like 90 days in my business. So um, put the work in. You just got to do it. Just jump out there and just start talking. If you're talking about something, people will want to listen. So what's the work? Run the play. Follow the leader. Power of three, right? You got um, you got to do the three-way calls. You should sign up three people in your first day if you're new to this business, if you're doing it right. Because you should exhaust every single phone number. Never don't leave a rock unturned. You got to look for people and you got to tell them, listen, um, if you want to know what I'm doing, I'm about to do something really big. I'm doing a call at seven, be on it. Well, what is it? You'll hear about it on the call. I got to call other people. That's what I do. If I leave and sell candy apples tomorrow, that's how I'm going to do it. I'm going to call Byron on the phone and say, Byron, listen, stuff's going down. I got something that I need you to see. I'm going to do a call at seven o'clock. If you have any leaders, this is, where, this is where we get them right here. Hey, Byron, if you have any leaders, you can bring about five to 10 of your leaders on this call as well. All right, I'll see you on the call. That's how you do network marketing for real, <laughs> right? You got to put yourself out there. Stop overthinking. Stop thinking you have to say the right thing and the perfect thing. No, you got to say something and get some people on a call quick, fast, and in a hurry. If you don't launch your business, your business is going to fail every single time. If you don't launch your kid's business, and I say kids, children, like your personals. I personally signed up Byron. I personally signed up November. I personally signed up um, uh, Tanny. I personally signed up, who else did I personally sign up? A lot of folks, but a lot of these people then have personally signed up other leaders. Byron personally signed up Gifford, who personally signed up Chi and Christy. That's why these leaders like, but, but then it breaks down, ladies and gentlemen, people stop moving down. You got to keep grinding until you find the leaders six to seven levels deep in your organization, right? Six to seven levels deep in your organization. That's how far you have to go. So you got to make a list and you have to launch, okay? Launch, make a list. Um, I'm sorry, schedule a launch, make a list, call everybody, Follow up with all those people, enroll excited people, plug them into the system, duplicate with your new people as fast as you can. That's all we do in network marketing, right? We do hyper launches. We talk about all this stuff, but guess what? Those things are very, all those things are helpful. Hyper launch is exactly what we're doing right now, right? Make a, make a schedule and schedule people's business launches immediately. 
have them make a list, dump their cell phones by any means necessary, call everybody that you know before somebody else calls them, follow up with every single person right after that call, enroll excited people, give them the playbooks, plug them into our Facebook group and Telegram, make them watch the Holton video so that they understand how to get their business off the ground with intensity, and guess what? Duplicate it. When their people come in, guess what happens? We are like, so what do we do now? What do you mean? What do we do? The same thing that got you into this business. I don't understand why people ask that question. So how do I, how do I um, get going? How did you, how did you get into this business? Well, I got invited to a call. Okay. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> so now we're going to schedule your launch. We're going to make a list. We're going to call everybody. We're going to enroll excited people, plug them into the system, duplicate. Now do that with your people. That is it, ladies and gentlemen, right? Duplication. So let's talk really quickly about, uh-oh, mess this up a little bit so you guys get to see me tinker. Actually, and let me just do it this way. It doesn't look the same over there. Okay, edit, undo, delete. There we go. Okay, so let's talk really quickly and I'm gonna unmute you guys in a sec so you can ask questions. I'm gonna go through this really quickly. So we're moving into the next phase of our business. We have been launching our butts off on Zooms and we've been doing big super Saturdays, but there's a missing piece in between. Can you guys write this down? Um, I need all of you to write it so that I, I know that you're doing it. This is the progression of a business, okay? So, somebody be a note taker. Okay, number one, you have to launch your business, right? You go from a launch, once you launch a business, you go to a PBR, a private business reception. So within the first week, everybody, we gotta adjust our way and we need to go back to the old school. When you bring somebody into the business, you need to schedule their launch call and schedule their private business reception. When do you wanna do a home party? Now, some people are gonna say, you know what, I'm not really comfortable doing um, a PBR right now in my home or whatever. Well, hey, do you have a restaurant? Danae did hers in a restaurant and she invited like seven or eight people to a restaurant and she did the presentation at the restaurant because people are out and about anyway. So maybe they don't want people in their houses, but you go out everywhere. You're at the club, <laughs> you're at Starbucks, you're all over the place, hanging out, wasting money. You, you could do a PBR. So ask them, do you really want to take your business to the next level? What These are the two things that you need to do. You need to do a launch call. We're gonna do that on a Zoom. And we need to go ahead and schedule a PBR, a private business reception, where we can invite all of the people in your area that you know to a private business reception. In our last company, ladies and gentlemen, this is what my brother did. He rented out this little place and he, he did a private business reception and he had 40 people there. It was gonna be at his house, but it got too big. And my brother hit $5,000 a month in the company in less than in 30 days in the company, okay? He was had legs though that were already at 10,000 a month in his first 30 days. He did it on a PBR, okay? Private business reception. So number one, you need to launch and schedule a private business reception in the first, um, when you first sign them up immediately, right? Now the PBR might not happen that week, but it should, but it may be something that you schedule for the following week because you're gonna spend the first week launching their business and getting as many people into their organization as possible. And then now those people who are in the area can invite people to the PBR. So schedule, uh, number one, schedule a launch first, um, Rico. So schedule your launch call, schedule your PBR. And then when you schedule the PBRs and you close out people, number three, you need to bam fam. You need to book a meeting from a meeting. All of those people who signed up Guess what you need to do with them? Number one and number two, two-step, like Reagan said, schedule their launch and say, hey, listen, whoever wants to have the next PBR, I would be more than happy to come over there 
right? Maybe we can give away some cash prizes or something. I don't know. Be creative with your people. If you got money coming in right now, put some money back into your business. Do some cash giveaways. Anybody who wants to schedule a PBR right now, I'm going to give you $25 towards your membership or $25 towards your PBR. Something. That'll get some snacks and things like that. So number one, schedule a launch. Number two, schedule a PBR. Number three, um, uh, when you do the PBR, bam, fam, book a meeting from a meeting and schedule the new people's launch and PBRs. And that's it. And then we, we push all those people to a super Saturday event. And then we push, write that down. That's number four. We push everybody to a super Saturday. And then we push everyone to a main corporate event. That's what we do. Launch, PBR, bam, fam, book a meeting from a meeting. Go to Super Saturdays. This is where you might do it at a hotel or something in your city with your peeps. And then move to a huge event like our Florida event. But we have to have that rolling. So here's the question. Um, Jacob McCor, are you out there? And Gina Rivers? Let me um, unmute. Gina, are you there? I'm here, Megan. I'm here. Good morning. I'm here, Megan. All right. So, Jacob, we can tag team. I just have some quick slides, and then we'll answer questions. But if you guys want to tag team, I got to mute everybody again. Okay? So, I'm going to go through it really quickly, and then if you guys um, want to stop, want to stop me in between, I'll just stop in between the slides, right? So, Gina and Jacob did a PBR, private business reception that was very successful, 100% closed. You want to create a professional flyer of some sort. Don't have your head cut off on the flyer or whatever. This is going to be the visual um, for your guest, right? So that they can remember. So create that professional flyer. And typically you do PBRs at somebody's home because people are more comfortable coming to a house than they are going to a hotel. It's a little bit less uh, a little bit too formal in the beginning. So home parties are really amazing. You also want to make sure that you're, you're visible. So Gina put some balloons outside of her house. So when people are pulling up, she can say, hey, listen, it's the house with the balloons. So people aren't driving around all over the place. These are basic, simple touches. Okay. And G Gina and Jacob jump in whenever you want. Okay. Now, here's where we get to the real important stuff. This is where my 14 year old daughter became, uh, grew up, right? She used to work the table when I was in at my, in a four, in a, another network marketing company, she worked the table and she used to be stuck to me like glue. Um, Gina, you have to, un oh, okay. Hold on, Gina, raise your hand for me. There you go. I thought you were co-host. Sorry about that. That's okay. Megan, really quickly, I just wanted to add for folks, because this is important, on the flyer itself, um, while we're really excited about hitting our ranks, it doesn't have to be Gina, high income earner, gold, uh, on the leaderboard, I'm simply the host, because people don't know me from Jump Street, right? Uh, Jacob is the VP of Global Sales. He's the vice president. That's the draw because, oh my goodness, I'm coming to Gina's home and I'm going to have an opportunity to meet the VP. I just wanted to point that out because that really is a big deal. No, that really is. It's the little things. It's the added touches. Um, and then also, let's see the time. You see how the time says 5 p.m. Eastern? Don't put 5 p.m. to 7 o'clock because people are going to show up late because they think it's a party and they think, oh, okay, I got time to get there. No promptly at 5 p.m. Eastern. And then you may be starting your, when did you guys actually start though? What time? Well, as lovely it is in Atlanta on Sunday, there was lots of traffic. So I don't think we actually got started until 5.20, correct, Jacob? It was, um, no, 5.30, exact. Okay, so there you go. Um, and Noreen said, what if you don't have a high position person at the PBR? Fantastic, listen to what I'm telling you. You don't, all of you guys are high position people. Every single one of you. You know why? Because you're the first five to 10,000 people in this company where we're going to put 100,000 people in. 
you, if we they have feel to, the need to put a title, you can put um, company leader, expansion leader, area leader. <laughs> national expansion leader is my favorite. When people ask yeah. me what I do, I always say I'm a national expansion or a national, uh, a global expansion leader for Extreme FX Global Academy. It's a Forex company. You know, everybody like title, right? I am a global expansion leader for Extreme FX Global Academy because that's exactly what we are. And you have to understand all of you guys are leaders. You have to start seeing yourself at the top before you get there. When I got into the last company in Tradera, ladies and gentlemen, I already acted like I was at the top when I got in there. And I didn't, I didn't have two nickels to rub together. Nobody else would have known that because I already could see myself as legend. So I was already telling them, I'm going to, Focus on hitting legend in 90 days. I didn't have not one paycheck when I got started. I launched my team for seven days with, I wasn't even, I didn't even make any money yet, <laughs> but I'm a boss always. So you guys got to boss up on these people. They don't know any, any different. It's how you see yourself. It's not how they see you. How do you see yourself? Okay. Uh, wouldn't they be the CEO of your company? I don't understand that, Pamela. A global expansion leader is, uh, oh, wouldn't they be the CEO of their own company? Absolutely, right? Absolutely. Okay, so let's move, move forward. So let's take a look at this table. And I can't see, so. Uh, and Gina or Jacob, if you wanna add anything, but in, at the sign-in table, it's very important. I uh, have a guest sign-in sheet and a member sign-in sheet because you, you wanted to, and you can print this off on Google, it's so simple, just so you collect data, it's a funnel, you gotta collect their names, okay? Um, mints and candy, because you know, it's like church, people get fidgety, and candy and mints and things like that, help them to not be so fidgety. Have your mask and your hand sanitizer and your thermometer there, um, so you can check the guests and they feel comfortable when they come in. Also, you wanna have colored name tags or colored markers that distinguish between the guests versus the members. Jacob, do you wanna speak on what you did when you were in the front of the room and how simple it is when guests write in red, members write in blue, what's the psychology of that? How do you use that to your benefit, Jacob? Absolutely. Hello, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon. All depends on where you are. <laughs> um, yes, um, Gina, had the uh, the color coded. She let me know who was the guest, so I knew um, who to point it, who to point out, what names to call out when I was in the front of the room because I knew who the guests were. Okay, and uh, because based on the name tag, so I engaged the guests in to part of the presentation when I would kept saying, "Does that make sense?" I have them to raise their hand. Have everybody raise their hands. And, you know, basically, guys, all I did was got up there and I told my story from how I got into network marketing, you know, up to this point and, you know, from one company to another one and all the way how I got into Forex and all that good stuff. And, but I never really got in and I talked to, I talked briefly. I mentioned every founder, you know, Adrian Sloan, CFO, Ms. Meg Lynch, you know, uh, 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 Human Relation the department, head of that department, um, Ms. Megan Lynch, the, uh, our master distributor, and our legend maker. And then I say myself, you know, the VP of Global Sales. And that I, I didn't spend a lot of time on that. Why? It, because that's what the video was going to do. The video was going to pr present the presentation. I just need to make, I, all I wanted to do was make the audience feel comfortable with me. And once I got the wall down, in about five days, about less, about 10 minutes. I talked for about 10 minutes. And once I got the wall down, ladies and gentlemen, and then when everybody started laughing and feeling comfortable, and then I said, you know what, guys, let's jump right into the presentation. Ms. Gina Rivers already had everything queued up. All she had to do is just, and she can talk about that piece, and all she had to do is just hit, you know, hit the play button on the, um, on the YouTube video to 12 minutes, and I think Gina had the one that she had was 12 minutes and 26 seconds. And so it just, um, it's fortunately the one that I always send out that I have is 12 minutes and 47 seconds. So 
And I promoted that video. And then I said, guys, and listen to one of our, ma- I listened to our master distributor. She's going to go over the, the whole presentation and I'll come right back. After that, I came right back up. And um, really, I, I didn't ask any questions until okay. later on. Will you hold yeah. that thought? Because that's on sure. my next Okay, slide. okay. Oh, you got some more slides. Okay. Hold no, that thought because I want you to come back to that so you can see sure. you can see the progression of what happened. Absolutely. Um, and before you all move on, I want to point out something too for those listening that are members who attend the PBR, right? You're in blue. Your name's written in blue. So it helps us to know who's playing team. You may come to a PBR at my home and you're a member, but I don't know you yet, but you're in the business. So we're locking arms as members because what are the PBRs for? They are for the guests. So we're tag teaming to make sure our guests are comfortable, that our guests meet who the leader is and our guests know where the water is and the bathroom is and so on and so forth. And this is gonna pop all of your bubbles. Even though you may not know Jacob Nickel and you're itching to get to know him and you're itching to take a picture with him, do not monopolize him or whoever is the leader in the room doing the presentation. Let them work the room and be with the guests. At the end, once we know every guest has had an opportunity to meet the leader, then you can shake hands and take pictures and ask questions and get on their calendar. But it's really important that when you are in the heart of the PBR, it is about the guests and then getting those next meetings booked so we can keep the business growing. And you don't want to take time away from the guests. Absolutely. That's a really, really great point. So remember, like, be friendly and and, and kind, but it's about the end result. And the end result is, is we want to close out the guest. If there's one guest in the room and 30 members, we want to add a new team member because we never know. People underestimate the power of one. What if that one person that you signed up in your business was a, you know, Linda Rogers Brown that came into your business and she brings in uh, Deanna and uh, Alamine and a, you know, a, uh, Ernest Fleming and you know what I mean? You never know. So we we are focused on, even on these twos and nines, we're focused on playing team. Thank you to all of you who show up to the two and the nine to play team. I know who you are. I know who my leaders are because they play team in the chat and it helps me. They're in the chat making comments and, and pushing the uh, energy along. But people who don't show up because they're like, oh, well, I've already heard her before, so I don't need to get on the two or the nine. You're being selfish. <laughs> selfish, selfish, right? I need you to play team. We have guests on, just like we have guests in the PBRs. Call the guests by their names. That's why it's very important to have different colored name tags or write in different colors so that you can call them by their name. Uh, the snack table, ladies and gentlemen, I learned this a long time ago. You need to keep it simple, water or clear drinks because you don't want anybody spilling anything on the floor. Um, cookies, chips, candy, something quiet though. You don't want to be cooking your, your grandmother's dropkick gravy. If you flex on your cooking, you're going to kill your business. I'm telling you right now. You know I love food, so if I show up to your PBR, do not try to impress me with your, with your uh, macaroni and cheese. <laughs> Don't do it. You'll kill your business because what people are going to say is, is, well, dang, I, I don't have all that money to spend on all that food and everything. And they already start saying, I can't do it. Just based on, do you understand the psychology of people? Little things. <laughs> I can't do it. I can't afford it. I'm not going to be able to have one of these at my house. So I don't want any of you guys making anybody else feel like they can't do it. Cookie, chips, candy, that's it. And right. Megan, in the middle of a pandemic, try to go with things that are pre-packaged so you don't have to worry too much about people touching stuff, okay? And then if you do something else, like a fruit salad or that kind of thing, take it off to the side so you can really do it right with like tongs, you know, a spoon, that kind of thing. But always create an environment where they can kind of grab and go and stand around and talk at the end. 
Absolutely. And my favorite cookies are those Delta cookies. I think you can get them at the dollar store. So if I come get me some. Love them. The, bis <laughs> bis bis biscotti or whatever they're called. Oh, those are my favorite. Anyway, so moving right along. But I met Gina Rivers at a PBR, if you guys can believe it. When was that? Like 2000 and um 19. believe it or not Megan it was almost three years to the day of the one that we just had um uh three years in a month because we did that in May and I had just also moved into that home and this home that we had this one in Sunday I had just moved into that home and Jacob told people G uh, Megan was here at Gina Rivers home for a PBR <laughs> just like this one I said just to bring it to your attention it's something about my home and PBRs I know, I know. And that's when I really met Jacob and Gina. And I was super, super quiet. I was just kind of taking it all in. I was just getting back into network marketing um, after like a year and a half. So anyway, or after a year, but funny how things work out, right? So do not kill your business. Keep it simple. Nothing distracting. No children, dogs, etc. I don't have your dogs around. Not everybody likes dogs, right? I, I, I'm a animal person to a certain degree, but not really. I don't want them in my face, right? I don't want them slobbering. My brother has four Great Danes in his house right now, and I have allergies. I can't even go over there, right? Four of them. Can you imagine having four Great Danes in your house? Um, and they had 12 because they breeded them. I, it's going to be hard. And children, talking and crying and running amok, right? Even in the regular meetings, don't bring your children if, and this is what Robert used to do. Jacob, you remember this? If you brought your kid to one of Robert's meetings, then the sponsor had to go outside and sit with your kids and miss the meeting while the guest stayed in the room. He wasn't playing about that kids crying and disrupting and stuff like that. Right. I know we have kids and we got to do what we have to do, but that this isn't the time or the place at all. Okay. People worked really hard to get their people in the room and it's like church and you hear a baby screaming and crying because the mom showed up late and couldn't get the kid into the child care. <laughs> Sorry. I'm in a mood today, Jacob. Um, but yeah, <laughs> colored name tags or colored markers, guests versus members, be friendly and kind, call the guests by their name. That's going to be super important. Okay. Do um, you want to add anything to that, Jacob? Probably on no. this slide you do. No, no, not, not the last one. How, housekeeping rules, right? No in and out. Now, it's a short presentation, super short. So nobody should be like running in and out. This all goes for our our big meetings as well, because it's somewhat distracting. And I know we're there for a while, so sometimes you can't help it, but you don't wanna be running in and out of the room. Some people do that because they wanna be seen, they got a new dress on, new suit, right? And it's distracting though, when you do that. Um, turn off in the housekeeping, I would get in front of the room and say, okay, listen, if you need to go to the bathroom, we're gonna get started here in about five minutes. So if everyone could go to the restrooms, um, please make sure you turn off your cell phones, put them on, silent or vibrate so it doesn't disrupt the presentation also ladies and gentlemen sometimes you may have little notepads for them uh, we got some little notepads over here to the side and some pens we encourage you to take notes i encourage people not to take notes on their phone because it, it's a bad look it looks like you're not paying attention even though you're taking notes so encourage people to take notes on notepads so that everybody looks like they're engaged okay um, Hold questions. I would say if you can all hold questions until the end, you have to remember that some people don't have much home training. <laughs> they don't have any social cues and they'll just be talking like in church. You know, that person in church who's always like, say it, Reverend, say it. I'm like, if you don't be quiet over there for just a second, so I can hear this message. But you know, those people, you know who I'm talking about. So tell them. If you guys could kind of keep it quiet so everybody can hear, hold the questions until the end. Absolutely no talking. I remember, Jacob, I got into it with one of our leaders at our last company because they were sitting in the back of the room talking the entire time. And maybe it's the teacher in me. I'm like, if you don't shut the heck up, talking the <laughs> whole time. And then you got people around you not being able to focus on the speaker because you got somebody doing the presentation in the back of the room. <laughs> oh. 
And then what Jacob was saying is next, listen, you got someone doing housekeeping in the big, in the front. This is where you can start giving people roles. People may not be able to jump right in and start doing presentations, but you know how I started speaking in front of people. I did the housekeeping rules and I was so freaking nervous when I did it. I was shaking, sweating, and I had to get in front of the room and do the housekeeping rules. And I'm like, whoa, thought I really did something. And I did, I got my feet wet. And then guess what? I started being the one to edify the speaker. I started edifying Robert at the PBRs. And um, I don't know if I, I don't think I did it at you guys' home, Gina. I was pretty quiet, but edification of the speaker. Hey, I want to introduce you to a really sharp brother who has done a, a phenomenal job. He's made uh, millions of dollars in this industry, Shark. Uh, he loves having a great time. He's probably one of the funniest people I know. Dolphin likes to have fun. Urchin is facts, right? He's got 100% of the information. Not only that, um, he has I'm sorry, the dolphin, yeah, likes that fun whale. He has a, he, he really truly has a heart of gold and is just helping hundreds if not thousands of people all over the globe. Keep it simple, guys. So uh, let yeah. me introduce you to my partner, Mr. Jacob Mickel. Keep it simple but effective. And then Jacob talked about telling his story, right? Briefly he told a story how he came to be and introduced some of the leaders. And then he played the video. He pushed play. We're going to get a new corporate video for you guys that's going to be very, very professional that you're going to be able to share. But right now, do what you do. You may even want to make a video yourself so it's you talking on there. I don't know. But play the video. And then, Jacob, can you talk about closing the room, signing them up ASAP, and then bam, famming, booking a meeting from a meeting? Absolutely. Yeah, so um, once I told my story, um, Gina Rivers was ready to, I mean, she was sitting there. And I said, okay, Gina, hit play. She did that. I came back up, ladies and gentlemen, after the meeting. And um, first thing I did, because the video is a little dated, and we have changed our fast start program. So I explained that, you know, just to make sure nobody walked out of the room thinking that they could go out and get three um, in their first seven days and get $99. I just covered that real quick. I mean, it was, I mean, I just breezed through it. I didn't spend a lot of time on it. I talked a little bit about the 2000, I mean, the $2 override um, through 14, through nine to 14 levels. I talked about that. And then I asked everybody throughout the whole time, ladies and gentlemen, every time I'm speaking, when you're in the front of the room, even when I'm telling my story at the beginning, I'm asking people, have anybody, raise your hand if you've ever done this before. If you raise your hand and that ever happened to you and does this make sense? And and everybody just kept raising their hand, raising their hand, because they was in the form of raising their hand. And um, when I got to, you know, after I went over the, you know, the fast start, then I went into a close. How many people heard of Forex before? I mean, before today, um, did this make sense to you? Um, are you familiar with Forex? And everybody's raising their hand. And I said, by the way, in, in this seven point, $4 trillion and growing every single day. How many people see themselves doing something like this? Great. Okay, great. Okay, for the guests only, how many people see themselves getting started with us today? Bam, they raise their hand. Why? Why do they raise their hand? They, and they look around and see that all, you know, all the guests' hands were in the air. In there. Matter of fact, some of the um, members raised their hands and uh, raised their hand. Why? because they were used to raising their hand and playing team the whole time. So when the guests raised their hand, I say, great, what's your name? And the, um, one of the guys said his name was, uh, Gina, I always get his name wrong. I think it's Tron. Tron, Tron. Tron, absolutely. And I said, hey, Tron, you see yourself getting started with us today? He said, yes. I said, great, great, welcome to the family. And there was another young lady, uh, Sierra. I said, um, great, Sierra, hold your hands up. I see, um, did this make sense to you? Great, I see yourself ready to get started with us. Are you getting started today? Yes, great, great. And I, by the time I got around to all the guests, ladies and gentlemen, because the first guy said yes, the second guy said yes, why did I start with? Because I was paying attention to the whole room. I knew who was engaged, I knew who was gonna sign up. But if I got him to say yes first, I assumed the other people was gonna say yes too, why? because I was watching them the whole time. You got to survey your room, you got to know your audience, you got to know your guests, 
And you got to understand that people are playing team for a reason. You stand up there and be monotone and just not raising your hand and asking people, does this make sense? You, you, you're really going to limit yourself when you get to the end and you try to raise the hand and say, now, wait a minute, Chris. let me ask you guys a question. Does this make sense? Probably nobody going to raise their hands unless the people in the room that, will, that, know, that know how to play team. But if you get the whole audience to start raising their hands from the beginning, you ask open-ended questions while you're telling your story, then you have no problem at the end to get the guests to raise their hand, whether they want to join your business or not. Well, let's fast forward. Everybody raised their hand, so they were ready to sign up. Here's what I did with the final close. I say, matter of fact, for all the guests that's getting started, Ms. Gina Rivers, I'm going to do a special favor. What I'm going to do for the person that's getting started tonight, for everybody that's getting started tonight, right? Everybody raise their hand, say yes, great. But what I want to do, and being that this is the first PBR, the first official PBR, I'm going to make this very exciting. I want to put everybody's name in the hat, in a bowl, and uh, Ms. Rivers is going to take everybody's names down, and I'm going to pull a name, and I'm going to pay half of your subscription tonight. Wow, everybody was filling out real quick. Bye -bye. Put it in the bucket, I pull out a name. And they say, Dad, I didn't get it. I said, you know what? Let me pull one more. I'll do that. Let me tell you something, guys. I did that. I ended up paying um, a couple subscriptions. Why? Because it was the first one. We had a great crowd. The crowd was awesome. Gina Rivers did a great job. Gina signed up three, uh, three personals that day. Um, I mean, great. I mean, some powerful individuals that came into our organization. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. Once we got into this clothes and everybody was having fun with that name drawing, and I'm not saying that you have to do this, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not telling you to do this, but this is what I did because it was the first official PBR that was live and that we were going to be talking about, right? I just did that because of excitement and get just to get everything going. But let me tell you something. People did not want to leave. Why? It's because of the room and how fun the room was, how comfortable everybody, the wall has came down so low, even the people who never met everybody, even the guests who never met anybody was going up taking pictures with people that were in the business. They, they were so happy to be a part of it because it was how the rule was set up. It was how the PBR was set up from the time you pull up in the parking lot, from the time that you signed in, from the time that you sat down, and from the time that Ms. Gina Rivers introduced me, and that's when everybody was comfortable because everybody was introducing people to each other. Hey, this is my friend from South Carolina. People drove from Gastonia, North Carolina. People drove from Greenville, South Carolina, from all over Georgia. And they were there. But Jacob, can I add something real quick too? You can. Um, for those of you again that are looking to play team, here's something that you really need to know. Jacob is a master at this. Um, and I won't play down the fact that we've known each other three years, each other three years, and you can hear by Megan talking, we've done PBRs and meetings for years. But set all that aside for, uh, for a second, and I want you to really hear me in this. When you tell your story, it's really important that you not be in lecture presentation mode, but be in personable chatting, talking to somebody in your neighborhood mode. And right off the bat, you want to address any, um, any perceived objections right up front. And Jack, Jacob is master at this, um, and I've learned from him, and I'm sure Megan will know where I'm going with this in a second. When Jacob started his story, he started talking about how the lady had invited him to go and how he knew he was struggling and needed something and how he shut her down. That was great. Then he transferred right along to the deciding, I needed something, so let me get it together and let me go. And he's making it fun and interactive the whole time. But he says, and this is key, I told my wife, I'm going to go ahead and go because I gave her my word and I really need to, you know, check this out. And I told Adrian, I wasn't buying nothing. 
I wasn't selling nothing and I wasn't signing up for nothing before I left the house. Why is that important? I'm not saying that you need to copy what Jacob said. What I'm saying is in your story, you need to talk about why you were not necessarily interested or why you may have had doubt in the beginning because it makes yourself relatable. It makes yourself be people in the room. Everybody can relate to that, okay? So just remember that when you're up there and you're telling your story, you wanna keep it simple, keep it short, but you wanna also be able to address uh, what's in the room. And then when he was closing the room, he kept it simple. He tied it all back together and then shared if he hadn't gotten involved at that time, he wouldn't be able to have the lifestyle that he has now. No, all of us can't say that we've made $10 million in the industry and we're celebrating 30 years. Not all of us, right? Your Linda Brown, um, um, Rogers May and some others that have been in for a while, but we can surely say as a single mom of four, you know, I moved from one state to another state and have not skipped a beat because this type of business opportunity has always been available to me. You, you have to find what will work and you want to make sure you address possible or perceived um, objections in the beginning and then tie it together at the end and engage. There is not one person that stepped foot in that, in that room as a guest that did not close and we had one of those members, I, we signed up everybody on the spot. If they were there, I had the laptop and the iPad out because you know our back office is clean, it's easy, it takes 30 seconds. And you don't have to have no money to get them in there. But what we did is we had them get in there and we made sure they zelled, I mean not zelled, cash app or whatever, immediately. So we knew we controlled getting the money in their e-wallet. We didn't worry about all that funding and all that other stuff. You can take time to teach that later and the one gentleman that jacob kept including his name tron he put three months of his membership in his e-wallet that night while jacob was there in the room and one person who wasn't even in the room in a totally different state signed up just based on the excitement and seeing how many people were in the room so 100 percent closed in the room and one that wasn't even in the room so and just think about that can i kind of piggyback the the gentleman who put the three months in there, because you guys have to remember that in most of the other Forex companies, people are paying three, four, five hundred dollars a month. Some people are, you know, I got a lot of people in this Forex space. So when we're charging ninety nine dollars and one hundred and twenty four, you just because you might think that's a lot of money because it's the type of folks that you're hanging out around with and you're you you have to learn how to adjust when i when i talk on calls like gina said you have to get rid of all their objections so when i'm doing a call and i say we are the most inexpensive platform it's 99 bucks most people spend that getting their hair and nails done my daughter's getting her eyelashes done right now and it's good thing she has money <laughs> i'm not paying for it because it's like 85 dollars you know and you, you, but it's, it's all about how you feel about what you say. But if you're like, well, it is, it's 124. No, it's $124. And you could be a student and a business owner. Do you guys realize that to get into some of these other Forex companies, they're three times more expensive than we are. So in, in three months, they pay darn near $900 to be in that program. My partner, Courtney, he's phenomenal. He launched something, but it's four ninety five a month. And guess what? People pay it and he doesn't flinch an eye because he's like, whoever talks about not being able to afford what I'm offering, then I'm not for them. <laughs> That's how he is. I'm not dealing with them because if you can't afford my value, you don't need to be over here with me. $4.95 a month is what he charges. So, and Megan, I just want to add one additional thing real quick before you and uh, Jacob um, finish that section is that for the BAM fam, book a meeting from a meeting, very, very, very important. Once the speaker leader closes the room and um, before you all break for signing up your guests, introducing the guests to the leader, you want to get buy-in while the guests are listening and the excitement is high for the next meeting, the next PBR. 
I already knew that I was going to be committed to hosting them at my home at least twice a month. So I was ready for the next date, which is Sunday the 25th. So I said, okay, by a show of hands, how many of you are committing to be back here at my home on the 25th, same time, same back channel? Because now I've got the business partners in the room committed, and now the new business partners that are just joining know that they can go and now invite people back to a place that they're familiar and know that their people are going to be taken care of. Very important to do that. And as you're consistent with those PBRs, then you'll start branching out. No, not every PBR has to happen at Gina Rivers' home. But now you'll have down in Law having one in Stone Mountain, somebody over here having one down in Atlanta. Gina will stay in Lithia Springs in Douglasville. And then somebody else will have one, um, you know, maybe in Athens. I don't know. I'm just naming some cities. But it's really important that you book a meeting from a meeting and people know where's the next one. Where's the next one? And then you're going to get to a point that on a Sunday at five o'clock, there may be six opportunities to feed in in your area. And ultimately, um, that'll be the goal leading into the weekly meeting, which I'm sure Mr. Nickel wants to talk about. Absolutely. Let me say this real quick. So Javonda, Macy, I know you said, what about just being passionate about helping and teaching? If you only want people who make lots of money already, you're not in it for the right reasons. Now, Javonda, I get what you're saying, but I think you know me well enough to even make that comment. You know that we help a lot of people, but guess what? Our time is not free. Everybody wants to be, we're, we're all the givers, but you get into business to make money. And if you think, Javonda, that you're going to be hanging around with a whole bunch of people who don't, you think about this, when, if you had a bakery and you spent all this time baking a cake and then you got people always wanting the hookup, right? Well, just that's, people do that stuff all the time. They, they don't value your time and energy. I mean, it's, it's, we've been on here for an hour and a half. I'm not just about the money or I wouldn't be sitting on here for an hour and a half teaching network marketing 101 when you could easily go to the internet like I did and watch a video and learn how to do a PBR. That's how I learned. Before I met a Robert Dean, I learned how to do a PBR because I, that's how I met Robert Dean because I did a PBR. <laughs> and we had 150 people in a small room. That's how I met him. But I had to take a step out and I had to spend my own money. I had to learn so that I can do it. It's not about just wanting people who have money. It's wanting the people who are willing to pay for the value that you offer. I'm, I'm tired of dealing with people who expect everything to be free. They expect their mindset is, well, you should just want to help people in the poor house. You know how you help people don't become needy, right? That's what my, my mentor told me. You want to help homeless people don't become one. You're going to be able to help a lot of them if you're not living paycheck to paycheck. So guess what? And I help a lot of people because I'm not struggling trying to figure out how to pay my bills. I'm not sitting around, do you think Martin Luther King was thinking about paying his bills while he was out in the streets, beating the streets, helping people? No, I'm sure he had money coming in so that he could survive, so that he could save the world. So I definitely wanna save the world and you guys know that, but I'm gonna deal with people who understand the value of doing business, right? Megan, I think she was talking about the other company, though. Oh, well, yeah, with them, too, though, even with him. what yeah. I can't say that he's wrong, though, to offer a product for $495. We can't, we can't say that because he helps a lot of people. But And I learned this from my partner, Jason. I can't tell him that you're wrong for charging $495 and not wanting to deal with people who don't respect your value. He was a lawyer. He gave up his law firm to teach the U.S. 30, right? $250,000 a year to go after his hopes and dreams. So I can't tell him he's wrong to charge 495 because guess what? He's got 150 people who pay him 20 grand to learn. The, the point I'm trying to make is, is that we can't dumb down or devalue our program because we offer so much for a great value. So you got to look for those people who understand your value, right? So sorry that's, if I read it the wrong a, way, but still, I, I yeah. got I to gotta big them up, right? Absolutely. But that's a great point, Megan. Um, and, and, and this is a takeaway for everybody on this line, guys. And I mean, 
you guys know me and hear and hear me train and all that good stuff. But guys, I always teach, never focus on the investment. Focus on the, if you can see value in the return, it's where you put your, put your, uh, put your focus on. Mm -hmm. Investment is just always going to be the minimum. It's all, no matter what nobody tell you. If somebody say, I want, hey man, if, I, if you give me $100, when I get paid on Friday, I'll give you 150 back, man. I really got to have this 100. Now, what are you going to say? Now, you can say, wait a minute, man. You give me $150 back? Oh, man. Okay, I'll give it to you. Guys, the investment was, okay, I'm, I'm investing in you to give me $150 back. If he give you back $150 on Friday, guys, you just, you just made one time, one and a half times your money, right? You made your money back plus half. That makes sense. So that's how you got to look at business. Look at the investment. Are you going to win them all? No, you're not. That's why you call it an investment, all right? Because focus on the return, not the investment, guys. So up front, just imagine, think about this, and Megan is talking, but even in extreme, let's forget the last company. She's turned, she's turned um, $144 into $50,000 a month. Now, you think she worried about $150 every month coming out of her account? Are you kidding me? When you're making $12,500 a week? See, guys, that's what I, those are the type of stories I told. I mean, when I was there, I said I paid my first um, opportunity, I paid hundred and I mean, $495 to get into that business. First 90 days, first six months, I struggled until I sat down with, with a gentleman by the name of Mr. Montreal Jackson. He sat down and gave me a 90-day game plan. 90 days later, I was making $14,000 a month. But I paid $500 that I didn't have to get into that company called ACN. But that same investment that I made 24 years ago have, 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 had allowed me in this industry to live a lifestyle that I, that, I, that I dreamed about, lifestyle that I wanted, lifestyle that I saw these guys doing. But had I not made that initial in, on, on June 8th, 1996, and I didn't make that $499 investment, would I be here talking to you guys today? I don't know. I don't know. But that one-time investment, a few companies later, I'm, I'm, I'm this year I'll go over $10 million in the industry. I'm only a couple, of, a couple of more thousand dollars away from being over $10 million in this industry. But, it's a, but it all started with a $500 investment that I made. See, that's how I look at the investment. And the investment kept me in the game for 24, going on 25 years in June. But I also told one more story, Megan. I also told one more story that a friend of mine came to me 10 years ago and asked me to borrow, you know, I mean, to invest with an oil and a real estate, in a real estate deal. There's a mall that been built on this, on this land that he asked me to invest in, $100,000. $100,000. I had the money in the bank, but I was skeptical. I was feeling some kind of way. I was like, ah, I don't know if I get $100,000. But then again, it, it dawned on me. Focus on what? The return and not the investment. So I gave, I, I, and then he said, man, by the way, we're going to also, there's some oil stuff that we're going to invest in. What? Really? Got it. I gave him the $100,000 10 years ago. I made my money back within eight months. All my money. My, my wife was cursing. I mean, about to put me out of the house. Everything. You can't work. You can't believe. I, I mean, she was going in on me. But 10 years later, I made, well, matter of fact, now I make $4,000 a month on that one-time investment. $4,000 a month. I have grossed over $480,000 off of that one investment. And I made that money back four times, almost five times. But had I focused on the investment, I would have never ever was, would have put myself in position to profit on the return. So guys, $99, $125, $145, don't focus, don't, don't get caught up on that, guys. Don't get caught up on that. Just imagine what you can turn that into. Gina Rivers already turned 
her one forty four into two thousand dollars on her way to five thousand dollars a month. Rico, Gino, I mean, you can go on and on and on. Tony, just think about that. Megan Lynch, Reagan Lynch, Sloan, all, everybody, and everybody who's making money on this line, think about that. And that's that's what we got to get good at of not focusing on the money, even when you're talking to your friends about the opportunity. Stop focusing on an investment. Sell the value. Sell the value, guys. And I promise you, it'd be easier to enroll somebody once they see value in what you're doing. It's never about the money, because anybody can come up with 150 bucks, $144. Anybody can. My baby girl, when she was 16 years old, she said, Dad, I'm gonna um I wanna go out here and um do something. I forgot what it was, but I'm gonna just this is the story. She said, Daddy, I'm gonna go out here and oh, raise a hundred dollars for something. And I said, well, you go do it. I'm not going to give it to you. And then what she did, she went out and asked 20 of her friends to invest in whatever she was doing. I can't remember what it was to get to the $100. And I said to her, Jacob, the finance guy, right? Said to her, well, wait a minute, baby girl. Why don't you go to five of your friends and just get $20? She said, daddy, nope. It was easier for me to go to 20 of my friends to get five dollars, because they wouldn't even think about the twenty. I mean, the five dollars they were giving me, but they would have had to think about the twenty dollars. Because remember, Daddy, we're only sixteen years old. Five dollars is a whole lot easier to get than twenty. So I went to twenty of my friends and got five dollars. That's how I got the hundred dollars. I, I threw my hands in the air. I said, "That's what I'm talking about." See, guys, you got to get good at, and everybody on this line has stories. But if you can tie stories into your everyday life and your opportunity, that makes life easier when you come to enrolling people in this opportunity. That's why Megan Lynch is so good at enrolling people into this business, because she has a story. Gina Rivers, Gino, um, uh, um, Rico, and I can just name a few, myself, I always, everything I do, I equate it to a story. I tell stories all day long. Why? Because my mentor souls tell stories. My second mentor, Mr. Robert Dean, tells stories. And that's how they enroll big time players into the organization. So Ms. Megan Lynch, um, I appreciate everything that you do every day, sis. Um, you're good at, very good at what you do. But guys, don't take the master distributor time for granted. Do not. And guys, if you don't have something positive to say, not, not saying that anybody said anything negative today, don't post that mess in the, in the chat. Because guys, I, I do a lot of calls. I have my own Telegram group because Megan Lynn said back when I first got started, get your own Telegram group. I went and got my own Telegram group. When she said, you know, guys, have your own calls. When, back when I was, you know, was just a rep, I had my own calls. But guys, one thing I can say that nobody write anything negative inside of my group. There's about 1,500 people in that group. And also when I'm on a Zoom, there's nobody write anything negative in my group. And I, I, I train on this stuff also. And the reason why, guys, is because I nip that in the bud up front. I say, if anybody in this group from day one, I put a note out, if you put anything negative in here, you're out. I'm kicking you out. I'm, I'm kicking you out. And I always address when I start my training calls, if anybody from day one, you say anything negative, you're not allowed back on my calls anymore at all, whether you're in the business or not. This set the stone. This set the stage, guys. And nobody should be saying anything negative in this group when Megan is trying to train you every single day. She's giving you her heart, her soul. She, I mean, she's pouring out. She's riding on the highway. She's in a hotel. She's on the side of the road. And here we come. She's pulling over, sweating in a hard car. And here we come with some foolishness, with something negative. Guys, stop it. And I'm glad to have somebody like Rico and the other young lady, I can't remember her name right now, in November, who's policing, you know, the area. Guys, stop it. Stop it. We're trying to grow a business here. If you got a question, man, 
You got Megan's phone number, call her on a private line. DM her on a private line, but not in this chat. We got to stop it. Matter of fact, you know, if it's not positive, help her feed her like what I see Tony and everybody doing. Great. Awesome. Machine and everybody. That's the type of stuff that we need to feed to give us the energy to keep going. Guys, this is not easy getting up every single day and talking to you, finding something to talk about and being motivated to keep you, to keep you guys engaged every day. So if we can just eliminate guys and get your team together and say from this day forward, we're not asking, you know, crazy questions. Uh, and if you don't know, guys, sometimes it's best to hold it to the end. Uh, let's say, Megan, can I call you offline? Uh, uh, Jacob, can I text you offline? Whatever. Just hold some of that stuff. It's not all meant for this. It's not all meant for it because everybody don't need and, and when everybody's on a high and somebody come and ask a, a question to Megan to really to suck the energy out of what she just off the awesome training that Miss Linda Rogers Brown just did. Somebody put something crazy inside the, the, the telegram or the chat and, and ask something crazy to suck the energy. Guys, let's keep the positiveness going and let's just hold the negative thoughts later. For later. There's a time and a place for that. There's a time and a place. So I just want that was on my heart, man. It's on there. No, I no, <laughs> it was I on my heart, man. And I had to I had to go there this morning. I didn't mean to go on and on, but guys, that's just how I roll. <laughs> I'm Can sorry. I say one thing too, Jacob? Because you you speaking from from your your level of leadership and it's needed. But for someone that's in the field, I just want to share with all of you in the field. It is really time for us to own this company and run it. And I'm going to use something on you that my mentor told me. I know you can do this because you show up and you're ready to see your life change. And if you're showing up and you're ready to see your life change, let's get to work. This is probably one of the most easiest things you can do with early in my growing in, in, in something like this, Jacob and some other people that I that were my upline leaders said, Gina, we know you're in Syracuse. You can't be in Atlanta to come to the live meetings and the sessions. Just push and play. And that's what I call it. Jake, Jacob calls him something else, but I say I'm pushing and playing. That means that I'm literally going to put the video up on my screen and I'm going to play it. If Gina Rivers can build her business like that, way up in Syracuse, New York, no leadership, no support, no local meeting, nobody, you can too. And you have a community, a common unity with four phenomenal founders that are backing you with hands down bar none training that we all have access to. I know that you can do this. Let's do it. Let's just get out there. Stop trying to be a perfectionist and perfect. And can I do this? Can I do that? You don't have to be great to start, but you do have to start to be great. And today is the day that you need to start. Back to you, Megan and Jacob. Yeah, thank you. So listen, we're just going to end it right here. If you guys do a PBR and you can't get what you consider to be a major leader, but you're actually the major leader, um, you, you got to see yourself like that. Uh, but if you can't get somebody, just have them zoom in. I zoomed in to Danae and Zena's. Um, some who there were a couple other uh, ladies, so I apologize for not getting all the names. But I just zoomed in and, and closed their meeting out. Um, phone call, conference call, something like that. Where if you can't do a zoom in, just say, you know, I can't get Megan. I can't get the founders. Let me try to get somebody else. Get your immediate upline to zoom in and just say, hey, listen, great. They don't need to redo the meeting. They just need to give a quick one minute, two minute blurb just to help you close out the meeting. Last but not least, listen very carefully. When you guys do these in-home meetings, it might seem like it's moving slow, but it really doesn't. Think about this. Gina signed up three people. What if she was brand new and it was her first week? She signed up three people on that, call, on that uh, PBR. And then 
she book she can book a meeting from a meeting and she's going to launch these three and potentially do a pbr for those three because they showed up they were in the room so clearly they live close by so look this is 500 a month right here this is a thousand a month you need to let people know that very simply, you can go one, two, three levels in this company and darn near pay your entire yearly membership, okay, in this company. You can't do that anywhere else. You're already at $1,000 a month at this point. So don't sleep on these PPRs and launch calls. The only thing that's a little bit frustrating to me is the fact that people, they launch their business up here and sign up three, and then you're, you act brand new and you don't launch these three people's businesses. You're sitting around waiting for somebody else to do it. And two weeks, I'm getting ready to do a call with a girl with three people. She's been over here for two weeks. She has three people. I said, have your three people signed up their people? Well, well, what are you doing? Like, it's unfair to come into a business and somebody launches you, and then you don't launch your people right away, and all that's gonna happen in 28 days, they're gonna quit. So, Get your three and then launch them in three days, less than three days. Launch their nine people in less than three days. Launch them in less than three days. Over and over and over again, that's how you get to the money. It's all about speed. It's not about skill. It's not about who you know. It's about how fast can you duplicate what leaders do. So we're going to hop off of here. Thank you guys so much. Let's get it. Come on. <laughs> Let's get the duplication right, the replication. That's it in this business. Duplicate leaders as fast as you can and do what they do. That's how you make money in this, this industry. Socks and toothpicks, cupcakes and cotton candy, I don't care what you're selling, it's duplication and speed, okay? Thank you guys so much, Jacob. Thank you for jumping aboard and Gina. Thank you, I know we've been on here for two hours, right? But listen, it's worth it. Absolutely. Thank you, Megan. You're welcome. Peace and blessings, everyone.